All right, let's get some more analysis. Klaus Jürgens is a political analyst and an expert on EU affairs, and he joins us now from Innsbruck in Austria. Uh, Klaus, good to have you on. Now, uh, Germany's Foreign Minister Heiko Maas said that it was important that we stay in dialogue with Turkey, but at the same time, sort of topping the agenda at the meeting of these EU foreign ministers in Luxembourg are possible sanctions to Turkey. Um, it doesn't seem right. No, thank you good for having me on in this improvised uh, manner. Thank you. Now, first of all, may I uh, pick up uh, what uh, our esteemed colleague just said. I think there is a misperception in Europe, including Germany, that Turkey is fighting the Kurds when it is actually fighting an offshoot of a terror organization and by that doing so stopping the real terror organization and the PKK actually from attacking Turkey itself. Now this is a topic which is dear, unfortunately, a topic which has to be dear to our heart. Now I hope that the meeting in Luxembourg, they may discuss it frankly, this is what politics is all about, but they, they do not make the mistake of imposing sanctions. Sanctions are always a last resort. They should not impose any sanctions whatsoever. They should on the other hand, actually ask Ankara, how can we help you? You are, after all, defending NATO's southern, southeastern flanks and borders. Perhaps this would be a better strategy to come together and say, you are exposed to the terror, and what can we do to jointly combat this threat? Instead of coming together and saying, let's impose sanctions on Turkey, let's do not export any weapons anymore. I think this is the totally wrong approach at the exact totally wrong moment in time. Okay, so you say this is, this is a, a wrong approach. I'm wondering what uh, your analysis of another approach is, and that is uh, when you look at the words coming out of the French foreign minister, he said that this Turkish offensive in northern Syria is going to cause a, quote, serious humanitarian devastation. I mean, the Turkish side could argue that this is very disingenuous uh, when they say that they've received very little support from the European Union since 2018 with regards to the refugee crisis. Absolutely. As I have said uh, in all modesty uh, time and again, it is not enough to pat Turkey on the shoulder and say thank you very much for stemming the flow of migrants and becoming a humanitarian role model. Now all of a sudden there is a precise terror threat building up south of the Turkish border. And now all of a sudden Turkey has lost all its humanitarian clout and actually is becoming a threat to humanity herself. Now this can only be described as turning around history facts, turning them into fake news, uh, uh, reaching a new level, not only 2.0 but 4.0. I very closely followed what happened in French cities and the demonstrations. I saw many of the uh, illegal flags depicted uh, during these manifestations, arguing that uh, President Erdogan is a criminal, is, is, is dangerous, and, and uh, all this not understanding that actually not the Turkish state or the Turkish people is attacking itself, but that there is a real terror threat from the PKK and its offshoot YPG. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what exactly will happen in the European capitals, but I think now blaming Turkey for having done so much on the humanitarian side is, is ludicrous. Yeah. I have okay. no other, very sorry. All right, Klaus Rugens, good to see you and thank you for joining us here on the news hour.